This edition of Neighborhood Views, What's New Malden? Satiate your summer sweet tooth with Malden's newest shop on the block, Hoff's Bakery. Stay safe this summer with tips from Malden's former fire chief, Jack Colangeli, who will also chat about his Italian eatery, Jack's Ristorante. Did you know that Malden was a major player in the American Revolution? Get the lowdown. What's new, Malden? Here are your co-hosts, Sharon Filia and Sam Baltrusis. Hello and welcome to the July edition of What's New Malden. Joining me here is Sharon Philia, my co-host, my lovely Sam, co-host. How are you? <laughs> Doing really well. So I still have a sugar high from our visit to Hoff's Bakery. It was delicious, wasn't it? <laughs> After we finished interviewing uh, David and Nicole, they were gracious enough to give us some of the tarts, the four-part tarts. They gave you a, a container and myself one, and they were so delicious. And we had different uh, ones in each in each of our separate uh, containers. So after going to Hoff's Bakery, uh, Sharon and I went bowling with yeah. MATV. So we're part of the MATV pinheads. <laughs> so that was fun. <laughs> so it was a it was a charity event with the Malden Chamber of Commerce, and we actually came in fifteenth place. I heard that. That I <laughs> I couldn't believe it. We were one of the last teams to leave. So yeah. I thought, oh, this is over. And then when I saw the final roster, I said, wow, we actually didn't didn't do too badly. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. My first time bowling. It was a lot of hey, fun. This is Sharon Filler for MATV's Neighborhood View here at the Township Lines, where there is a wonderful fundraiser for the Malden Chamber of Commerce for Triangle Inc. We have a variety of bowling leagues here, all under different names. We have the Malden Redevelopment Authority, MATV, Wind Construction. So many, so many people are here to support and help Triangle for this very worthy cause. This is Sharon Villian. Now here I am with Mr. Ron Cox, Executive Director of MATV and also the creator and designer of these beautiful shirts. I guess you call me the head pinhead. <laughs> so Ron, how did you come to design this shirt? Well, I, I knew we had to have all our heads on the pins and I knew we had to have a bowling ball. So I'm thinking a bowling ball hitting the pins going like this for that strike. Sounds like a win to me. Now where are you on this shirt? I'm the ball headed guy. You're not too bald. Cut. So I got my hair cut, <laughs> wicked. But this is uh, everybody here that's, uh, let's see. There's Sam without his glasses. There's Haley, the me, my friend Mary. There's Christine, Anna, Guillermo, Josephine, and Brian. Wow, so there you have it. Beautiful shirt, beautiful cause. And I assume you're having a great We're time with that. Great time. And, and my feeling is that we, if we don't win, at least we have the best t shirts. And they have great pizza, too. Thanks so much, okay. Ron. Bye bye. Thank you. So actually seeing Sharon at the bowling alley, she was eating the limoncello tart from Hoff's Bakery. It was very good. I had like crumbs all over my face. It was so good. It was so good. And I shared one with, with one of the MATV staffers and he loved it as well. So, so we're actually going to watch a clip of uh, our Hoff's Bakery experience. Sounds good. Hi, this is Sharon Filia here for MATV's Neighborhood View here at Hoff's Bakery located at 35 Green Street right here in Malden. I don't know about you, but I love pastry. So we're next going to speak to David and Nicole Fertura about their beautiful newly refurbished bakery. <laughs> Hi, this is Sharon Filiar for MATV's Neighborhood View here with Nicole and David Fertura. Thank you so much for joining us. So Nicole, you were originally in Medford and from there you came to Malden. Why? So we originally started in Medford and Mystic Ave 33 years ago. We upgraded to a larger facility in Wellington and then we outgrew that so we're here. This is three times the size and Malden was very accepting and helping to us in getting us this facility and getting us everything we needed to be able to refurbish this and make it what we needed. That's amazing. Now 33 years. Now you don't look too much older than 33 years. You didn't found the company. Who founded this company? Uh, no, we did not. That was the big guy that founded it 33 years ago, my father Vincent. Um, and everything that we have here was a is a direct vision of his. 
Uh, we couldn't be more proud to see how far we have come from 1,100 square feet to 100,000 square feet in Malden. Uh, it's been an incredible transformation. So tell us, how is Hops Bakery going to put the icing on the cake here? How, like, what are the specialty items that people you find uh, most enjoy? Sure, so we're mostly a wholesale bakery, so a lot of people know our products from their supermarkets, hotels, and restaurants, but now they can come into our cash and carry retail and pick up a seven inch cake. And we've actually noticed that Malden customers really like smaller sizes, so we've started selling four packs. So we have four packs of our tarts, four packs of our squares. They're the perfect size if they're having a dinner party or a cookout. So what cake is the best seller that you see here in the, in the retail location? People love tiramisu, and you can't go wrong with chocolate. Oh, definitely. What's your favorite? I We have a chocolate truffle bomb. It's a, it's a seven-inch chocolate truffle bomb. Ooh. It originated here, uh, <laughs> which has a layer of chocolate cake. Okay. We have a chocolate cream, chocolate mousse, covered in chocolate wow. ganache. It's all chocolate. Wow, that sounds amazing. Nicole, what is your favorite? My favorite would be our strawberry cream. So it's white cake with fresh strawberry and whipped topping. So especially now that it's hot out, that's my favorite. This is Sharon Filio for MATV's Neighborhood View. And this limoncello tart is in my future. If you would like your own limoncello tart, come on down to Hop's Bakery located at 35 Green Street right here in downtown Malden. And I'm proud to have with me Mr. Jack Calangeli, proprietor and owner of Drax Restaurante, located on Eastern Avenue here in Malden. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Now, I've actually had some of the food at your restaurant. It's delicious. Thank you. And you were profiled on Phantom Gourmet. Yes. How did you like that experience? That was a fantastic experience. Also, Channel 7 came down. Oh. And uh, they filmed about a year ago. But the Phantom Gourmet was actually a very big uh, plus for us. And they still show the episode every so often. Right. And they got a big charge out of the fact that I was in the fire department. <laughs> and they had I a saw restaurant. that. And uh, it was just a great uh, experience for myself and for the restaurant. And they're just great people to work with. The Edelman Brothers, just wonderful people to work with. Oh, that's amazing. And I know the restaurant primarily um, serves Italian-based dishes. What is your favorite dish? Well, my go-to dish has got to be the chicken palm. It's our biggest seller. I think in the Italian restaurant business, if you can't make chicken palm at Veal Masala, <laughs> just go elsewhere. But uh, that's our biggest seller, chicken palm. It's one... I don't know what I want. I'm going for the chicken parm. Oh, the chicken parm. And you mentioned your grandmother, Nani, in the clip. So you yeah. said that one of the dishes is influenced by her, but then you kind of tweaked the uh, Yeah, recipe a lot of the recipes bit. were compilation of uh, my head cook and myself, and my grandmother taught me how to cook when I was young. So we took one of her recipes for meatballs, and we kind of oh. doctored it up because uh, we do butcher our own steaks there. Right. So we take the sirloin, the, the trimmings from the sirloin, we mix that in with the, uh, the hamburg for the wow. meatballs. So about 5% of the meatballs actually sirloin. So it's got a really meaty flavor to it. Most people really, really like them. Oh, I bet. But all of the dishes there, I mean, I've seen the menu. So you really work together with your chef to make yeah. a really um, inclusive menu. Now, switching over a little bit, you're, you're also, we're also the uh, fire chief of Malden, which mm -hmm. was a daunting position, a very important position. And um, how did you manage to do both at the same time? Well, it was pretty hectic there for a while. I bet. But, you know, I have uh, two passions. One was the fire department and mm -hmm. one was the restaurant. So as long as you're really enjoying what you do, it's not really work. So right. what, if I wasn't at the fire station, I was at the restaurant. And I just enjoy meeting people. I enjoy helping the community. Right. I love Marlin. It's my hometown. My dad was a Marlin fireman. So uh, it, was a good, it was a tough juggling act for a while. But now I'm retired. I, uh, I'm at the restaurant quite a bit. You can enjoy, relax a little relax bit, Relax right? a little bit, enjoying every minute of it. Now, um, now, one of your tasks as fire chief was, of course, to help ensure the safety of all of the residents of Malden. And you've done some special training um, with, with, with security and things like that. And in light of the uh, devastating uh, shootings in Orlando, I know that sometimes you give talks about what to do when one enters a venue and how to stay safe. So, so if someone goes to a nightclub or, or, any, or any establishment, what are some of the safety tips that, that you would give people to kind of look out for? Well, I'm glad you brought this up, Sharon, because it's kind of important, and certainly in the light of the recent tragic events in Florida. But um, 
I gave a lot of safety talks throughout my career, and, uh, and on the fire end of it, and I believe on, on almost any other end of it, people should always look for second exits whenever they go in any kind of venue, any kind of public place, right. because uh, any great large loss of life in fires through the centuries, right. which would be the, uh, the Coconut Grove fire in Boston, the Bub Beverly Hills Supper nightclub fire, mm -hmm. uh, the Station nightclub fire in Rhode Island. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes out the door they came in. It's called a cattle effect. Right. And that's just instinctively to go out the door you came in. And all these large losses of, of, of life at fires mm -hmm. are always at the doors. So the second exit might be just right around the corner from you and no one knows about it. So you should always see, look for your second exits. I kind of do it instinctively. Right. But I would recommend everybody always look for that second exit if they have to get out. As far as the uh, Orlando tragedy, you know, if, if you hear gunshots, certainly you want to evacuate the building. Yes. If he's at one door and there's an exit right around the corner, so by all means, get out of there as fast as you can. So, so even if you walk into a venue and you don't immediately see the second exit, you think that people should take the time and just locate just just another exit. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Especially in venues where there's entertainment because there's usually other exits near the stage area, which oh, could be okay. remote from the front door. Right. So you might have a longer distance to go to the front door when there's a door right near the stage area or near the back of the building. So that's one of the better tips I think I can recommend to people is right. always look for that second exit. And also the one thing that I had um, actually read about, I believe it was because of the Coconut Grove tragedy, they have kick-out doors um, next to revolving doors. That's standard now, right? Yeah, unfortunately it always takes a tragedy for us to kind of look at the codes. And uh, at the Coconut Grove fire, which was around 1942. Mm -hmm. uh, they had the, uh, the rotating turnstile type doors. Right. And once that got jammed up from people, no could get oh, out. Oh, my. So all the doors after that, and it's a good point you brought up, right. usually the side panels are all kick-out panels. Right. So that if the ro rotating door, the revolving door got jammed up, you could actually push those side panels out. And then the last safety tip I wanted to ask you about was there were some uh, people who sought refuge in the bathroom and there was no second exit. So I, I, I would assume even in a fire that that's pretty instinctive to I'm going to run into a closet or something yeah. like that. But that's actually not a good idea. No, anytime you trap yourself in, I'd say it, nothing good's going to come out of that. Right. I know what they were trying to do. They're trying to hide and cover. And I, can, I get that. But I still would say just either crawl towards the door, right. try to get out as fast as you can, look for those other alternative exits to get out of the, out of the building, and I think that would be probably your best bet. But trapping yourself in, and we see people do that in fires, right. it's usually not a good thing. Oh. Uh, and I've seen quite a few uh, you know, tragic events in my career. I'm, I'm quite sure. Well, thank you so much for sharing this information with us. I'm sure oh. that, that the residents of Malden are so grateful for all your years of service. And now we're going to cut to a letter written by the residents of Malden to the First Continental Congress. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> I'm Sam Baltrusis with MATV's Neighborhood View. We have a historic first here in Malden, reading of a document that says Malden was a major player in the American Revolution. Let's enjoy. So now we're going to turn it over to Mr. Coots, and as we do, I think the best way to segue from me to him is through a quote from Thomas Jefferson. How little do my countrymen know what precious blessings they are in possession of and which no other people on earth enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy Tom Coots and the Charlestown Militia. Before I begin, I just want to make all of you aware what a precious document that you have in this town. This document is historical on every level. And I want you to listen to the words as I read them from 1776. They rang true then and they rang, ring true today as well. The time was, sir, when we loved the king and the people of Great Britain with an affection most truly filial. We felt ourselves interested in their glory. We shared in their joys and in their sorrows. We have long entertained the hope that the spirit of the British nation would once more induce them to assert their own and our rights. And we now instruct you, sir, to give them the strongest assurance that if they should declare America to be a free and independent republic, 
your constituents will support and defend that measure to the last drop of their blood and the last farthing of their treasure. Hi, I'm Sam Baltrusis with MATV's Neighborhood View. Joining me now is Tom Coots. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing great, thank you. So how did you get involved with, with this reenactment? Well, tonight's reenactment, I was very excited. Uh, about two weeks ago, uh, Ron Cochran from the mayor's office called me, asked me if I'd be willing to take part in their festivities. And I said, what do you want me to do? And he said, we've got this historic document. And when he sent me the document and I read the document, my eyes were like a kid in a candy store. This document that was read tonight is probably the first recorded acknowledgement of an entire community voting for independence from Great Britain. And it's just great to be part of it. Yeah, it was pretty amazing when, when Tom actually read the, the document. I uh, got shivers. It was like really amazing. I, I, the first time I read it, I actually cried. And then the next couple of times as I, as I read it, I did get shivers up my spine. And the more I read it, the more I realized what the words meant. And we were in a position where we were subject to, a, to another country. And we were making the decision that no matter what was going to happen, we were going to become our own country. And I think that's just what America is all about, standing up for the rights that they believe in for their own independence. So tell me about your outfit. Well, I decided to show up as it's a month here reporting for MATV. Why not represent free press? We have a historic afternoon here in Malden. Happy 4th of July for MATV's Neighborhood View. I'm Sam Baltrusis. Thanks for watching. Welcome back to the July edition of What's New Malden. Joining me now is Liz Tagle, the lovely Liz Tagle. Hi, Sam. How are you? So Liz Tagle and I, we go way back. We, were, uh, we worked together on Neighborhood View. Uh, we also worked on 13 Most Haunted in Massachusetts together. Yeah. Uh, and then Liz recently had a baby. Yes, I did. <laughs> I did. Uh, he's one month old today, actually. Oh, uh, exactly. Uh, so tell me a little bit about the ba little the little baby, the little uh, one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he is uh, well specific to this situation. He's amazing, and <laughs> I feel like a pretty lucky mama because he's just you know one look, and I'm I'm mush, um, but. Uh, the new mom experience was, uh, you know, a, such a surprise to me, which is hilarious because it's pretty much like, you know, the embodiment of all cliches. It's insane. Uh, you don't, you, you know, you, you can't really prepare for too much uh, in terms of scheduling your day. It's up to them. Just sleep when you can and have a sense of humor and, uh, you know, just try just do whatever you got to do to, you know, to make it, to get sleep. So Liz Tegel's um, the producer of Release the Sounds. And how were you able to juggle Release the Sounds and uh, have, have the baby? Uh, well, um, right now it's a lot of planning ahead of time. You know, we worked while I was pregnant to have shows lined up, uh, shoots lined up to work on um, through the summer. So... There are still shows that are going to be released uh, through August. Um, so we have this month, uh, Never Got Caught, oh, cool. uh, is uh, being featured. And we shot them back in April. And then in May, we did two shows. So I'm very, very pregnant <laughs> in both of those shows uh, to be, uh, to be uh, released in July, uh, which will be Private Fortunes in August, uh, which is a band called... Um, I forgot their name, but they're, <laughs> which, no, which is a, which is a band called Quarters and, uh, and they're, um, you know, all the shows, we just made sure to have all that lined up beforehand. So the group from Neighborhood View, were kind of like a family. We uh, had, right before you had the baby, we had, we had a little shower and, um, we had a little like boppy pillow and a cute little, um, onesie for the baby. Oh my God, that onesie is so cute. He's not big enough for it yet, but oh, once okay. he is, I can't wait. He's so we're actually gonna roll a clip that we made specially for Liz Tegel. Oh. I'm here with Liz Tegel from MATV's Release the Sound show. 
She is the host and producer and director. <laughs> I'm not the director. Oh, so sorry. Host and producer. I wear many hats. Okay. Host and producer, though. We Excellent. Can, yeah. Excellent. And uh, you, among other things that you do at MATV, what else do you do at MATV right now? Uh, I work with Neighborhood View. Okay. Uh, so I do contribute uh, at the meetings and, and wherever I can there. Uh, and I volunteer in any other way I can uh, here at MATV. And we have someone else that may be joining you soon. That's right. Yep, I am. I'm having a baby in an hour. So <laughs> excellent. So you're doing all of that at MATV, and you're pregnant. Yeah, well, I'm not having the baby at MATV. That's not in the. That's not in the plans. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Tegel, that was so sweet. That was very sweet. <laughs> it's like <laughs> a little teary eyed there. Yeah. So you actually want to work on a segment or a, a possibly a couple of articles working with local moms in regards to how to be like the th situations that came up being a new mom. That is the goal. Yes. Yeah. And how they approached it. I know, you know, from my end, having family around was key. Uh, you know, having someone to talk to who's been through that experience. And I, I want to know how other moms are doing it, too. I think that, you know, when you go into it the first time, they, you can hear, you know, so many things about what to expect. But it's such a unique experience that I think there's a lot of stories that should be told on that one. So what is, like, if you can give one tip to new moms, what, what, what would it be? Um, just... Take a breath, relax, and have a sense of humor. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be crazy. You just don't know how crazy it's going to be until you're there. So you know, take the moment and uh, and enjoy it as much as you can, even when it is that crazy. Thank you so much, Liz. Oh. Thank you, Sam. Valtrus is coordinator of MATV's Neighborhood View. Joining me now is Paul Hammersley. He is the media specialist for the city of Malden. Hello. Mm -hmm. Hey, how you doing? I was really impressed. You did you did a segment for the uh, Stop the Stigma. Yeah. And it was fantastic. And yes. Tell me about the backstory to that. Uh, Stop the Stigma Day was Malden. I, I'm the chairperson for Malden Overcoming Addiction. So we're, we're trying to do something in the community where we could involve the whole community and how could we impact every single person and try to get everyone involved via social media, right? and especially the kids. So we came up with um, wear a ribbon, take a selfie, share a video, change your Facebook profile picture. And um, we did a lot of promoting going into it and Dana Brown at the high school was essential in it because they were for 10 days that led up to it, they put out a fact about stigma right. in the high school leading up 10 days, nine days, eight days. So there was a countdown and um, it was fantastic. The reach was over 200,000 people. It was amazing. And I, a lot of the, yeah. the op opioid addiction is affecting the community dramatically. Yes, it uh, Addiction period is affecting the, the, the community dramatically. So the fact that you guys are taking a stand, uh, educating people regarding yeah. addiction. So from, you know, from the, the video that you did, um, you talked to people. There was like, like interviews with people that were affected or impacted mm -hmm. by, uh, by addiction. Yeah, what I did was I wanted to go around the city and just grab everyday people in their element because let's face it, at one point, every single one of us somewhere, some way is affected by the disease of addiction, whether you know somebody, family member, friend. And um, people were very receptive to talk to me. So I'd go to Stop and Shop. I'd go to Malden Square. I went to someone's home who had lost their child. Uh, a lot of people talked to me uh, about it. And then I, I put it all together. And then we shared that. And it was all about just the everyday person and how addiction touches their life. Well, I, when I watched the video and saw heard the uh, people talk about how it affected their lives, it was it teared me up. It was yeah. very emotional. It's tough. And so, looking back on it, like, what do you, what are your thoughts on the video? Did it how did it affect your life? Well, um, I am 13 years in recovery. Let's get that out there first and foremost. So, addiction affects my life every day. Right. I lived with it for a long time, and um, now I feel it's my passion to try to help people who are struggling with the disease of addiction. So. 
that's why um, I wanted to do the video. You know, Malden overcoming addiction is the driving force behind the whole thing. And um, I had a vision and I had a lot of people with that organization that had helped me. And um, it's just something I feel that the city needs more of. I think we can break through. I think um, the community as a whole can pull together. And, and really, I think we can make a difference through social media, videos, spreading awareness. Right now, we're in the awareness phase. Right. Phase two, I'm hoping to go to an educational piece, you know, um, but right now, we're still in the awareness phase. We're about nine months old. The main thing is you're not alone. If you're dealing with addiction, there's people like you that are also dealing with addiction. So that's right. I think that that's what the, the video does really well, that you're not alone. Right, right, right. Everything was okay, but I ignored the constant lies. Missed family gatherings. Bloodshot eyes. I thought it was only a drop in grades. I wish I paid more attention to the missing money. Quitting school. All the weight loss. The repeated loss of jobs. I ignored her sleeping all day. But I can't. Ignore this. If the signs are there, talk about it. Welcome back to the July edition of What's New Malden. Again, I'm Sam Baltrusis, the coordinator of MATV's Neighborhood View. Sharon, this has been a fantastic show. It sure has. So your whole interview with Jack, that was awesome. Right. So what did you learn from that interview? Well, I learned that you have to be aware of your surroundings. I think that's one of the biggest points to take from that. Wherever you go, and I spoke to Jack off camera as well, even if you're traveling, in a, if you're in an airport, and anything like that, just be aware of your surroundings. Don't get so caught up into you know, your phone or, or yourself. Be aware of what's going on around you. So I actually am organizing um, a gathering, a vigil for the Orlando tragedy. Yes. Uh, so we're, we're organizing people from the community. Um, the goal is to do a gathering, maybe like a candlelight vigil uh, 49 days after the Orlando shooting. And we're looking to do it at F uh, Felsmore Pond. That's wonderful. So That's we're going to post something on Neighborhood View for more information. Um, but it, Sharon, it was fantastic working with you again. Oh, it was so much <laughs> fun. And even even though that part of, the, of our show today had a little bit of gravitas to it, I think I think it went very well and I think it was informative and we, we learned some things and as with all tragedies or anything like that there is a lesson to be learned from that so that hopefully it will never ever repeat absolutely have a happy and safe fourth of July uh, and also I write books you may know that or not but yes. i write books so i have two books coming out this summer uh one is paranormal provincetown and the other book is haunted mm -hmm. boston Ooh. harbor so i've actually put together a clip for my book pa paranormal provincetown let's so, watch so thank you so much and see you next month ah paradise welcome to provincetown massachusetts Known as the spot where the pilgrims first set foot in the New World in 1620, this quiet fishing village located on the tip of Cape Cod is a popular tourist destination for both the living and the dead. Yes, human monsters once roamed Provincetown's picturesque and sand-swept streets. Our first stop is the Lancy Mansion on Commercial Street. Built by Benjamin Lancy for his mother in the late 1880s, the mansion was designed to emulate a Beacon Hill brownstone. Passers-by have spotted a lady in black who reportedly peeks out of the mansion's cupola. Yes, it's the very spot where Lancy propped up his dead mother during the winter as they patiently waited for the cemetery's ground to thaw. Over at the Victoria House on Standish Street is the former home to Provincetown's very own serial killer, Tony Chop Chop Costa. According to reports from his former bed and breakfast, guests would hear disembodied whispers throughout the house and the occasional scream of a female voice emanating from Costa's old haunt, Room 4. Some believe that Costa may have tortured his victims in the Victoria House, similar to Buffalo Bill in Silence of the Lambs, before murdering, removing their hearts, and burying them in Truro. Yes, Costa was a heartless killer. For many more tales from the crypt, 
check out Paranormal Provincetown by author Sam Baltrusis, coming out in the fall of 2016. Yes, darkness lurks in the shadows of paradise.